All right, class, uh, welcome into my home. I'm ready to do another lecture on the next chapter, uh, which uh, is about bonds payable. And as a reminder, uh, my lectures are just high level overviews. I'm not covering everything that's going to be on the exam. You need to uh, look at the lectures that have been posted on Canvas. Everything in those lectures is fair game for the exam and you should be focused on that plus reading the textbook. But I thought I'd pro provide a high level overview to see if I can bring this down to uh, layman's terms. If I can, it's a, it's a complicated subject, but uh, hopefully this will be a helpful supplement to the work that you're already doing and would be uh, absolutely more similar to how I would present in class. So we're gonna to start with bonds payable uh, today. And it's an interesting uh, concept. Uh, this is how companies borrow money and they pay interest on bonds from uh, an investor viewpoint. Uh, a lot of investors buy bonds for the fixed income. If you hear about retirees that have fixed incomes, because they own bonds and I own almost all bonds. I'm not interested in the volatility that comes with the equity market with stocks. So I personally own a lot of bonds. Now, having said that, and I may mention the investor from time to time, we don't want to forget about the investor here, but this accounting is not from the investor point of view. All the accounting will, will be doing is from the company's point of view. They're selling the bond to investors. The company is receiving cash to fund their operations. So always put your mind in the point of view of the company as if you were the accountant for the company. And with that, we'll get started. I'm gonna share my screen here. Make sure I share the right screen. Here we go. Let's, uh, let's get started. So let's just, uh, first of all, um, think about this. Let me see, put this up a little bit here. I don't think I need this light over here. That might be a little much. And uh, here we go. All right, uh, let's go back to the very first class uh, that we had. And we talked about uh, companies uh, starting a business and um, let me pull this back a little bit here. Let's see how this works. Da -da -da. Okay, I think this will be fine. So companies, how do businesses get started? First of all, they've got an idea. They've got an idea better than anybody else's idea. And not only a good idea for a product or a service that uh, people need, but also they know how to commercialize this idea, make money off of it. And so they've got an idea of how to sell a product or service to customers and uh, in entrepreneurs, they've got great minds for this kind of thing. They love doing this and starting companies with, you know, potentially uh, really big returns and a uh, high amount of wealth and income can come out of a very good idea. But, you know, the great, even if you have a great idea, uh, you know, you're going to have to have cash. So cash uh, matters. And where, where are you going to get cash? First one, and we talked about this, is equity. And this is ownership interests are called equity. In the next chapter, we'll get into the accounting for equity. And um, obviously, really interesting, uh, very important. Uh, you know, business is about making money for who? The owners of the business. They have skin in the game. If, they, if the company takes that cash from the owners and uh, they multiply it a hundredfold, a thousandfold, those equity holders they get a, their ownership percent of those big returns. So they have skin in the game and they can make, uh, they have a right to all the earnings of the company. And they have all, also have the right to influence the direction of the company. And so uh, that's interesting. And then the company uh, will pay owners out of earnings dividends. Remember, we saw this in some earlier chapters. Company uh, does not have to pay dividends. That's an optional feature. Some companies, uh, like Amazon that have never paid a dividend. They just reinvest uh, their earnings to grow the business and give capital gains uh, back to their owners. And so we'll get into equity in the next chapter, but I don't want to forget uh, this, these last, these two chapters are about funding cash so the company can grow. Okay, next area is debt. 
And that's what this chapter is about, specifically about bonds. We're going to talk about bonds. Well, debt is uh, companies like to issue debt versus equity because if that company grows a hundredfold, a thousandfold, you know, guess what? All you got to do is pay back what you borrowed. You don't have to pay any more. So debt holders, investors in debt, they don't have any skin in the game. They don't get any of the upside opportunity that equity holders get. However, they do get interest. And interest is nothing more than the cost of using somebody else's money. Now, if we're investors and someone else is using our money, in, this, in that case, uh, we would have interest income. So it could be interest expense for the person using or the company using someone else's money or interest income for the uh, company that uh, or person that someone else is using their money. So we're going to be talking about uh, companies borrowing money through bonds. Now, we'll talk a little bit about, there's some terms in, in bonds um, that are very important. And this is uh, crucial that you know all these terms. Unfortunately, a lot of these terms uh, have several different names that mean the same thing. So every bond is going to have this. Company name. Now, I say company name because I'm thinking corporate bonds, but it could be uh, municipalities, cities, uh, states, uh, the U.S. government issues bonds. And so um, bonds could be uh, different than a company's name, but it could be the name of the person, company, government that issued the bonds. That's going to be there. Second, face value. That is the, that is the amount that will be paid on the very last day of the bond's life. Now, it's called face value because that's the amount printed on the bond as, uh, you know, if we say I've got a $100,000 bond, 8% bond, that 100,000 is the face value. Face value has some other names. Principal. Par value. Maturity value. Or some other names. And maturity value gets into the next uh, thing is maturity date. And this is the, uh, the last uh, day of the bond. If you had a 10 year bond, it's the last day in the 10th year. What happens in the maturity value? The face value gets paid and that uh, matters. There, um, another term here is the stated interest rate. And this is, um, this is about interest payments. This is uh, a promise from the company to the investor. On the very last day of the term of this bond, we're going to give you the face value. And along the way, we are going to give you interest payments. And uh, these are also called coupons, coupon rate or a uh, nominal rate or some other names. And they just mean exactly the same thing. No change in, in the name here. Uh, next, how many interest payments per year? Most of the ones we'll be looking at will be once per year. Sometimes it could be paid twice a year or monthly, which would be 12 times a year. And uh, let's just look at an example here. If you have a 12% bond paying two times a year, I just want to note this. Hey, that 12% is always the annual rate. So each of the payments, each would be 6% each or, you know, 12% divided by two. So to keep that in mind, that's important to know. The 12% is an annual rate. Again, mostly we'll look at payments that are just one uh, time of year. And the last thing you're going to need to know is another interest rate. So this is what confuses students because now we have the stated interest rate and then we also have uh, the market interest rate. Or this is also called the yield 
or the uh, effective interest rate. Again, no change. All these terms, they're interchangeable. I, I even personally, uh, I interchange um, these, these terms. So uh, let's just talk a bit about this market rate because um, the company's going to pay one rate, but the market may say, hey, that's, that's not really a fair interest rate for the investor. You, you're paying, and companies can pay more, or they can pay less. Um, but the stated rate is always about the interest payment. But this market rate um, will get back into the value and how much the bond will sell for. Now, I'm going to show you an example here, kind of uh, let you look at it. You know, I don't know how many of you guys are investors out there. You know, I hopefully you got your uh, appetite whetted here. Uh, I have um, just, you know, I digress a little bit here in the course, and I want to um, um, sell you a bond and uh, just give you a minute, think about it. You know, I guess I could sell more than one of these. Um, you know, I don't know, whoever emails me on this, I, I will sell you, I will make sure that this can happen for you. So really, I'll just let you know. Hey, this is a good investment, and uh, you you should you should go for this. I'll let you read it for a minute. Oh my God, the phone is not ringing. You know, no one's calling me. You know, and I've showed this to my classes uh, every year. I've been teaching here for three years, and by the way, uh, no one has ever given me a dime. You know why? It's risky. <laughs> It's risky. I am, I'm 65, so I'll be 75 in 2029 or 2030. Man, I might not even be around to pay you back this $1,000, even though I say, you can trust me. Look at the smiley faces. You know, I'm a good guy. I'll pay you back. Now, the problem is, um, you know, whoever holds this piece of paper can go collect the $1,000. Now, if I'm not around, you might have to go talk to my son. Now, uh, I imagine, I hope he's not. Uh, doing this, but he might be in Vegas gambling away the inheritance. And so you can take this out there and say, Hey, uh, Mr. Rumbo, your dad gave me the, I gave your dad a thousand dollars and he gave me this piece of paper, you know, and I, I can kind of imagine what my son will say, you know, I'm pretty sure he's going to say, Oh yeah, that's right. My dad was a nut and uh, I'm not paying. <laughs> so obviously there's some, some risk with bond, but I use this piece of paper as a point because that's all that companies are doing. A bond is nothing more than just a piece of paper um, issued by the company. And it's a promise and it's a trust factor. And if you saw, you can Google some bonds, some actual paper bonds, you're going to see they got beautiful pictures and they look like U S government money or something. And it's like building complete trust in this great company that you're investing in. And so they try to get into, hey, you can trust me. So it's all about just pure, unadulterated trust that you're going to get paid back. So this also, you know, feeds into the market. Well, let's just start. Let's just look at here. Hey, guess what? Got a face value. Face value of this is $1,000. Got a stated interest rate of 5%. Got a term. Now, I uh, first did this on November 1st, 2019. So this was a 10-year, 5% um, bond for $1,000. It's a 10-year, 5%, $1,000 bond. And so we've got stated interest rate. That's the promise payment. So in uh, a $1,000 face value. So if you look at this bond, uh, this bond will pay $1,000, hopefully, on November 1st, 2029. Along the way, every year, it's going to pay 5% of what? 5% of the face value. So that would be $50 a year in two payments, so $25 each. So there will be payments of $50 a year in $1,000. So the cash flow stream, if you will, is the company will pay $1,000 on the very last day of the bond, November 1st, the maturity date. There you go, $1,000. And every year it will pay uh, 50 bucks in two payments, $25 every six months. That is, uh, that is that bond. 
Now, where does the market rate come in? Let me tell you that I know my credit card company, if I don't pay my bills, they're going to charge me 20% interest. So uh, they, they do not charge me 5% interest. They charge me 20%. And that's just for maybe a year or two. If I had to say, hey, I want to borrow $1,000 for 10 years, it might be 30% interest. It's not going to be 5%. So the market rate is a lot higher. So no one, and no one ever has, given me $1,000 with just a 5% interest rate. So in reality, where does the market rate play in? Well, the market rate plays in at how much cash this document can actually sell for. Because this document is selling for less than the market rate, it's pay, I mean paying only 5%, but it should be paying 20 or 30%, then this bond, the price of this bond is going to be way below, way below $1,000. Someone might say, hey, I'll give you 100 bucks for that you know, which maybe it's a, even a much higher interest rate. So use that example uh, just to kind of uh, make, a, make a point with you. So let's look at bond pricing for a second. So if the stated rate is less than the market rate, or in my little example there, 5% versus 25%, the state rates less than, bond will sell at a discount. So let's just use an example. Let's say we had a $100,000 bond um, with 10% interest rate, but market rate equals 12%. So this bond is going to sell at a discount. Now, I'm just going to tell you that a bond price on this bond equals 85. Now, I haven't calculated that out or anything. I'm just using this as a hypothetical, if you will. Now, what does 85 mean? Bond prices will either be two digits or three digits. And it'll be 85, 90, 105, 110. And all the 85 represents is a percent of the face value. So this $100,000 bond paying 10% at a, a pr is going to be sold at a price of 85. Guess what? The company receives, when they sell this, 85,000. Here's the problem. Later, they got to pay 100,000 on the last day. They still have to pay 100,000, even though they only receive in cash day one, 85,000. What's the difference between 85,000 and 100,000? Why do they get less? Well, we got to make up the difference in the fact that the company is only paying 10%, but the market is, is 12%. Therefore, we'll say if this sells at 85, it will be yielding 12%, even though it's only paying 10%. And we'll look at some examples like that. Let's look at another example here. Uh, so this, can, this can go both ways. What if the stated rate is higher than the market rate? Uh, in that case, we're going to say bond will sell at a premium. Let's use the same example. $100,000 bond with 10% uh, interest rate. But this less case, let's say, hey, the market rate 8%. Therefore, investors will give the company more money. And so let's just assume this bond sells at a price of 
115. Again, that number just represents percent of what? Percent of the face value. So the company receives $115,000 or 115% times 100,000. What's the difference between 115 and 100? Well, they're gonna be paying more interest than they need to be. So this is again, uh, cutting back the difference, truing up the difference, if you will, between what they're paying and what they really only have to pay at the market rate. So this is a whole bunch of arbitrage here that all these bonds will eventually yield at whatever the market rate. And by the way, in my accounting 3120, we calculate uh, that price based on the present value of the future cash flow streams um, at 8%. So it's mathematically uh, calculated uh, uh, in, in pretty easy manner. I could do it in like one second, uh, you know, on my calculator. But we, we, uh, we give you guys a break in this course. You don't have to worry about that. So you're pretty lucky. All right, let's go look at next uh, journal entries for these bonds. Uh, this is, uh, you are going to have to be able to know these journal entries uh, uh, backwards, uh, backwards and forwards. And so let's just use the uh, uh, first, uh, first example um, that I did. I think I had it. $100,000, 10-year 10, 10 bond sells for 85. So how much cash is going to re company receive? 85% times 100,000. So that should be uh, relatively easy for you. Cash is going to up, go up. So we need debit cash for 85,000. And we credit the bond payable account Not for 85,000. We always put in the bond payable account the face value. So we're going to credit the bond payable account for the face value of 100,000. But we got, we're missing a debit here, right? And so we're going to create a new account that you don't know yet, but you're going to learn from this chapter called the bond discount account. 15,000. Now, as we pay uh, interest along the way, this $15,000 balance is going to go to zero. And that happens in the second entry you need to know. So this is uh, first entry on day one of the bond. And again, you've got to know this entry backwards and forwards. So let's look at the first interest payment. And let's just say uh, one payment per year. Make this easy. All right. So when you're doing the um, uh, interest expense journal entry, and you're going to have to know this, let's first do the cash. I always suggest, hey, do the cash first. So how much is a company going to have to pay? We're well, going to pay 100000 times the stated rate. That's the only thing they promised to pay. And so 100000 face value times the stated rate, 10%, they're going to pay 10000 Second thing I told you, this bond discount account, let's look at the T account here. It starts out with, with a $15,000 balance. And over 10 years, this thing has got to go to zero. So we've got to do credits, equal credits every year for 10 years to make this balance go to zero. How do we do that? 15,000 divided by 10. So every year we're going to credit that bond discount count on and on 10 times until we get to zero. So we're going to credit the bond discount account for 1,500. And if you have trouble, um, you know, remembering this, just remember the bond discount uh, is always a debit balance, by the way, but it starts as with a debit balance. So it takes a credit to reduce it. And then interest expense in every example we're going to look at is whatever number it takes to make my debits and credits equal. Well, I got 10,000 plus 1,500, so I need um, uh, 
11,500 in interest expense. There you go. Let's look at uh, a premium example. And uh, so we're gonna do some problems. We're gonna do a lot of problems here. So let's just quickly look at the, uh, uh, the premium. In a premium, I'm gonna receive in day one more cash than the face value. Still, when you have a premium example, uh, in, in this example, the stated rate is greater than the market rate. So I'm gonna put the face value in a bonds payable account. I'm gonna receive more cash than the face value. And so instead of a bond discount, I'm gonna have a bond premium. It's gonna start out with a large credit balance uh, here. So this is entry number one. Uh, bond premium is just basically the opposite of a bond discount account that carries a credit balance. And then when we do the interest expense, same thing we did before, we're gonna credit cash, stated rate times the face value, and then we're gonna amortize the bond premium. So whatever, uh, and again, the bond premium starts out with a credit, we need equal journal entries to take this thing to zero at the end. So we gotta have, if it was five years, we do one fifth every year. If it's 10 years, one tenth every year. 20 years, one twentieth every year. And so we take that and debit those, and so we debit that bond premium. And then we look, same thing, what number will make my journal entry balance out? My debits equal my credit. So I got one credit on the cash payment. I got one debit. So whatever that debit is, I need to um, handle here. All right. Let's look at some problems. And so uh, if, if you think you're confident on this, uh, you know what you could do right now is... Uh, you could um, pause the video and see if you could try to, to do this journal entry. See if you could do the two journal entries. Give you a second on that, you can pause the video, and then restart it, and here I'm going to work it for you right now. And so um, what do we have here? Face value, 100,000. That'll be paid on the last day, 10 year term, and the stated interest rate, also called the coupon rate, also called the nominal rate, is 10%. So every year, this bond is gonna pay 10,000, and guess what, it's only paid once a year. Okay, so the stated rate is 10, but the market rate is 12. Therefore, this bond is not going, the um, LSA Burger is not gonna receive 100,000, they're gonna receive less than 100,000. Why are they receiving less? Because they're only paying 10% and the market is wants 12%. So they receive less cash up front. And you see that here in the price, 85, they're gonna receive 85% of the face value. Okay, I always say math is e easy in this course, 85% times 100,000, 85,000. All about um, being able to handle the logic. What do we put in the bond payable account? I hope you're screaming at me, the face value, 100,000. And so now we have a bond discount, debit of 15,000. That's the first entry. Day one of the bond, we record this entry. Let's assume it's January 1. And then at the year end, we got the first payment, let's say at year end, um, we've got to go now record the interest expense. And again, these are the two journal entries. You got to know backwards and forwards. First of all, let's do cash first, credit cash. How much do we have to pay? Uh, we're going to pay 100,000 times 10% every year, credit cash for 10,000. But we got this $15,000, this kind of a true up amount to get this bond from 10% um, to 12% because the company receives 85, but they're gonna pay 100 later. So that 15,000 is additional interest, really. And so we need to amortize that bond discount with credits. Remember, bond discount starts out with a um, um, $15,000 debit, so we're gonna have to do credits. How much? Uh, 15,000 divided by 10-year term, $1,500 in credits every year. So we credit the bond discount for $1,500 and we're gonna debit interest expense 
for how much? Whatever, and every one of these, premium or discount, same thing. Whatever debit I need, whatever number I need to make my debits and credits equal. I've got 11,500 in credits, so and there you go, 11,500 in debit. Answer, interest expense is um, 11,500. All right. Problem number two. I've got six of these. And so you, I would, you hang with me. Uh, you guys are going to be experts at this uh, with these journal entries, and you'll just, um, you'll just crush that uh, exam uh, next week. So here's a $100,000 bond with a 10-year term. Rate is 10%, but the market rate is only 8%, price at 115. Pause the video, work the problem, and then um, restart the video after you get done, and let's see, uh, let's see how you did. All right, so is a company going to receive more cash than the face value or less? Well, they're paying out more interest than the market rate. So they get to sell this bond at a higher price. How much? 115%. So we're going to debit cash for 115% of the 100,000 or 115,000. And we're going to credit the bond payable account. No change here. Always the face value. 100,000. But here we need a credit and we call that credit account bond premium. These bonds sold at a premium. You know why? They're paying a premium interest rate. Uh, they, get, um, they get more cash. All right. How about a 1231 journal entry? We got to go calculate what? We got to calculate interest expense. So what is the credit to cash? We're going to pay uh, cash. We don't pay the market rate. We pay the stated rate, 10% times 100,000, 10,000. We're sitting out there with this credit of 15,000. And then we got to book debits against that for how many? We got to do 10 of them, 1,500. So I'm going to debit my bond premium because I got to reduce it. I got to reduce it down to zero over 10 years. And so 1,500, 10,000 minus 1,500, my interest expense is 8,500. All right. Problem number three. Take a, take a stab at this one here. Pause the video, work this problem, and then once you get done, restart the video. And uh, you can see how you, you see me work it and see uh, if you're learning anything yet. All right, here we go. Face value, 500,000. Term, five years. Stated rate, coupon rate, 5%. What's the market rate, the yield, the effective rate? 8%. Right off the bat, I, I want you to be able to look at this and say, okay, they're paying less than they should pay. They're short paying, if you will, their uh, investors. So therefore, they, they're going to get short paid up front. They don't get the whole 500000 because they're going to pay less interest along the way. How much less? They're going to sell this at a price of 80 or 80% 80 of 500000 So how much cash are they going to receive? Journal entry number one, 80% of 500000 400,000. Let's take care of our bond payable account. That's always the face value, 500,000. And so difference sold at a discount. We got to uh, debit our bond discount for 100,000. That bond discount is going to get amortized uh, down to zero over how long? Five years. And that's where we get into journal entry two. Let's look at the end of the year, 1231. We gotta go calculate interest expense. And so how much cash are we gonna pay? Let's do the cash first. We're gonna pay uh, base value times, 
the stated rate. That's what's listed on the bond, the, like that piece of paper that has a bond. It says 500,000 on that piece of paper. And it says a 5% interest rate on that piece of paper. It doesn't say anything about the uh, market rate. That's something that happens when they try to sell it. That's what investors know. They need 8%. So the 5% times the face value, that's how much they pay, 25,000. However, we've got to amortize that bond discount. We started out with 100,000 uh, debit. And so over five years, we got to do until this goes to zero. And that's just 100,000 times the term five, 20,000. What is it? It's a credit because we started out with a debit. We need a credit to take it down to zero. So let's credit the bond discount for 20,000. And then let's go calculate interest expense. What, what number, what debit do we need to make our debits and credits equal? Well, it's easy because we've got $45,000 in credits. So we just need a $45,000 debit. Interest expense equals 45,000. All right. Example four. Again, pause, uh, work the problem, restart, and let's see how you did. Okay, got a $500,000 face value, five-year term, 5%. So just like the last one, except the market rate is only 3%. We're paying more than the market rate. Therefore, we can sell this at a higher price, and we do 120 or 120%. How much cash does the company receive? Debit cash, 120% times 500,000, 600,000. What do we put in the bond payable account? You better not miss this on the exam. We put the face value, face value, 500,000. And now we need a, we sold this at a premium and we need a credit. Uh, bond premiums are always credits. And our journal entry now works, debits equals credits. Now, I'm just looking at this right off the bat. That 100,000 has to go to zero over five years. So we start out with the credits. We're gonna need a $20,000 debit, 100,000 divided by five, $20,000 debit to reduce that. So next entry, debit interest expense. How much, let's go calculate it. We gotta pay our interest payment Face value, 500,000 times state rate, 5%. I'm gonna pay $25,000 in cash. I've gotta debit my bond premium, and that's gonna be 100,000 divided by five year term. I gotta do five $20,000 debits every year for five years. And so debit my bond premium, step two, 20,000, and then step three, what is the number I need for interest expense to make my debits and credits equal? Well, I got $25,000 in credits, but I only have $20,000 in debits. What, what debit do I need? $5,000. All right, two more problems to go. Example five, why don't you guys uh, take a look at that one, pause the video and work it yourself on your own. You should be experts by now. I'm expecting you to be experts and especially in the exam, I want you to be experts. All right, here you go, the answer. I've got a $400,000 face value, 20 year term this time, stated rate, coupon rate, 8%. Now, the market is expecting 9%. We also call this a yield, we call it the effective rate. So it could be market rate, 
yield effective rate. Um, and that's you know not decided by anything on the bond. The bond only has this information. This is gonna de determine when the, we go out and try to sell that bond, the investors, they know, hey, I'm not gonna buy it unless I can get 9%. They just want to sell it. The way they get to 9%, there's gotta be a true up. How much is it? Well, there's gonna be a, it's gonna be sold at a 90% discount at a price of 90. So the company's gonna receive 90% of 400,000 debit cash for, four, six, for 360, credit my bond payable for the face value, my difference goes in the debit of the bond discount account of 40,000. Got to calculate my interest expense next. How much am I going to pay cash? 8% times 400,000, only once a year because it's annual, and that's going to be 32,000. I've got to take this $40,000 debit balance to zero over how long? 20 years. So 40,000 divided by 20, $2,000 credit. Why is it a credit? Because it starts with a debit. I got to take it down. Uh, I reduce a debit balance with credits. Interest expense? Oh, I just got to make my debits and credits equal. I got $34,000 in credits. So interest expense is going to be $34,000. All right. Last one. Bring it home. Example six. Try to work it. I'll you know, just pause the video and then come back in and see how you did. And here we go with the answer. Uh, $400,000 face value, 8% stated rate, coupon rate. What's the market rate? It's only 7%. 7 so we're paying more in interest over 20 years. We're going to give them a lot of interest over 20 years, more than we had to, therefore we get to sell it for more. Uh, and we sell it at 110% of 400,000. So therefore debit cash, base value times 110%, 440. Credit the bond payable account for what? Face value. What do I have left? Because I've got 440 minus 400, I got a credit of 40,000 that goes into my bond premium account because this was sold at a premium at more. Uh, I mean, the terms are very straightforward. It makes sense here. And then to calculate interest expense, I'm going to credit cash for how much? I'm paying 8% times 400,000, 32,000. I got a $40,000 credit sitting over there in my bond premium account. I need 20 debits to take that to zero over 20 years. So each year, 40,000 divided by 20, $2,000 debit. And then uh, what's my interest expense? 32,000 minus the $2,000 debit. My interest expense is 30,000. Okay, guys, uh, that's it uh, for me. And there's a, you know, definitely a lot more information uh, out there um, on Pearson. Listen to all the Pearson lectures. Listening to those lectures is part of your engagement score and uh, also will help you uh, understand this, but hopefully with my you know, overview here, uh, bring it from a different perspective, point of view, hopefully it helps you uh, and that you will be ready uh, to uh, take this exam. Thank you guys. Keep using the study plan too, don't forget that. Thank you guys.